everyone, welcome back. This is my second video. Many of you liked the first one, to my great surprise. Thank you. First, I'd like to share with you how the idea came about, because I think it's key to understanding what I'm doing and why. I was in Rome in the Borghese Gallery, where I came upon an amazing work by the great Italian sculptor Gian Lorenzo Bernini, The Rape of Proserpina. It's an incredible piece, carved out of marble, depicting the abduction and rape of Persephone by Hades, the god of the underworld. As I'm standing there, I hear people commenting how you can see the indents of his fingers into the flesh as her body is struggling and twisting to be free, and the agonized expression on her face. And I don't hear anybody commenting on the fact that this is a sculpture of a rape. Everybody's talking about the technique. Everybody's marveling at this incredible sculpture. The subject matter seems to whiz right by. And that really hit me. And I was reminded of a poem by Robert Frost about a young boy who gets his hand cut off by a buzzsaw. And the last line of it has stayed with me my whole life. And the line is, And they, since they were not the one dead, turn to their affairs. And that was what I felt everybody in the room was doing. What hit me is that that is what everybody in the world is doing when a woman is raped. They are not the ones raped, so they turn to their affairs. As I'm standing there, I think I have to find a way to change the situation because it cannot continue this way. I think I have to respond to this. As an artist, I have a moral obligation to respond to this. And so that's what started Eyeing Medusa. Stories, scriptures, myths, and legends are all really important because they help shape our understanding of the world around us. And in the arts, we're always drawing upon this as subject matter for our plays, our operas, our sculptures, our paintings. The issue is that many of these stories illustrate and reinforce ideas that are harmful to women. Let's take the story of Persephone. Persephone is an innocent girl who is abducted and raped and held captive. Hades goes to Zeus and says, well, I kind of fancy her, I'd like her for my wife. And Zeus says, yeah, okay, fine, off you go. So Zeus condones the rape of Persephone. Some say she was a young girl in Greece just out picking flowers in a meadow, but we don't know. Maybe she was a 19 year old history student helping on the farm with her parents in northern Iraq. Maybe Isis came in and grabbed her. Maybe it wasn't Hades, it was Isis. Maybe she was walking down the Highway of Tears in Canada, and maybe somebody drove by in a pickup truck and hauled her in. Maybe she was walking along the banks of the Assiniboine River, and she gets attacked. Maybe she was just asleep in her bed at home in Chibok when Boko Haram came in. Maybe she was just out for a drink, a nice night after working hard all day, and hauled off. Hades sees her in the bar or picking up flowers, however the story really happened, and he grabs her and he takes her away. It's not an old story. This is happening every day. I think it's time that we think about what we are condoning, what we are permitting to go by uncommented upon. We cannot continue with our affairs. Think about the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. That's Persephone, snatched, taken away, and taken down into the underworld. Now, there is an amazing story with Persephone. She evolves, she becomes queen of the underworld, she is a survivor. And that is why I painted Rennell Harper. Rennell Harper is a First Nations woman from Garden Hill First Nation in Manitoba. In 2014, she was 16 years old. In November of that year, she was beaten and left for dead on the banks of the Assiniboine River. When she was found, Rennell Harper chose to speak out as an advocate for victims of violence. Rennell Harper said, we have to ask ourselves how we contribute to violence and take responsibility to change our words and our thoughts. That is so important. A year after she was attacked and left for dead, her home was burned to the ground. And still, she and her family remained strong. Last I heard, she was working for the National Inquiry for the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. I think Rennell Harper is remarkable, 
and for that reason, I painted her portrait. Nadia Murad is an Iraqi Yazidi human rights activist currently living in Germany. In 2014, Nadia was a 19-year-old student living in the village of Kocho in Sinjar, northern Iraq. On August 14th, Islamic State fighters rounded up the Yazidi community in the village, killing 600 people, including six of Nadia's brothers and stepbrothers, and taking the younger women and girls into slavery. That year, Nadia was captured and held as a slave by the Islamic State for three months in the city of Mosul. There, she was repeatedly beaten, burned with cigarettes, and raped. She successfully escaped after her captor left the house unlocked. Nadia was one of more than 6,700 Yazidi women and girls taken prisoner by Islamic State in Iraq. Today, Nadia Murad is the founder of Nadia's Initiative, an organization dedicated to helping women and children victimized by genocide, mass atrocities and human trafficking to heal and rebuild their lives and communities. Nadia Morad has started a foundation to stop rape as a weapon of war. For this, Nadia received a Nobel Peace Prize. This is my portrait of Nadia Morad. These paintings are from my series, Eyeing Medusa, which celebrates wise and willful women making a difference in the world today. Eyeing Medusa arose as a response to traditional representations of women, where we seem to be idealized and objectified, but also vilified, victimized, and then blamed. I think it's time for a new perspective. I think it's time to look at women in a new light.